Well, speaking of space, if you missed the fantastic display of the Northern Lights earlier this month, clear your calendars. Because from about June 4th to the 6th, the active solar region responsible for these multicolored hues in the night sky will be in prime position to generate solar storms impacting us on Earth. The Northern Lights, also known as Aurora Borealis, occur when particles from the sun slam into the atmosphere at high speeds. Earth's magnetic field then sends those particles to the north and south poles. That creates that light show in the sky. Well, Ryan French joins me now. He's a solar physicist with the National Solar Observatory. And I can just see from your smile, you're already anticipating this and excited like me. What's been happening with the solar activity since we last saw it in early May? Yeah, so we're currently in a peak of solar activity approaching what we call solar maximum. So this is an 11-year solar cycle of increasing and decreasing activity. Now, a couple of weeks ago, headlines, Northern Lights, Aurora, there was a massive sunspot region that sent several eruptions our way. Mm -hmm. Because the sun rotates with a rate of around 27 days, that region disappeared from Earth view for a few weeks, but is back now, again, uh, visible to us here from Earth. It has produced some solar flares in the last few days. One of them is meant to glance us tonight, causing some minor aurora. But that early June window that you talked about, that's when this sunspot will be prime positioned, that if it does erupt, if anything does launch, it will be the perfectly perfectly placed on the sun to give us a show here on Earth. And our viewers are looking at these fantastic images of sunspots that were taken by NASA. Tell me, what's just the most interesting thing that you and your team are watching for? Yeah, so the thing that's really interesting to watch with these sunspots is how complex it is magnetically. So we're all familiar with magnets, you might have them on your fridge, but magnets are also the main driver of eruptions on the sun, flares on the sun. So we watch to look how the magnetic field in this sunspot region evolves, and that can really give us an indication of how likely it is that a large flare will, will pop off from the sun. Well, and Ryan, when we're talking about solar flares and magnetic activity, we know that that can impact technology and communica communication yes. systems. Uh, should people be concerned about that? I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. The sunspot region is currently looking a lot less complex than it was earlier in the month. So although large solar storms are still possible, it's unlikely that we're going to match anything that we saw a couple of weeks ago. And that in itself was a great test for our systems to show really we're in a really great place in terms of our technological robustness at the moment. But when we're talking about what we saw last time, or for a lot of people, what they missed out on last time, I want to get back to talking about the Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. How is the range and intensity of these lights expected to compare this time around? Yeah, so first things to mention is that tonight there is a moderate solar storm predicted. This, again, it's a scale of one to five. This is a level two out of five. A couple of weeks ago, we had a five out of five. But tonight, places like upstate New York, the Midwest, northern states could expect to see some aurora. Whether or not we'll get a greater show later in the month, it all depends on what this sunspot does between now and then, so it's really difficult to say. But my best advice would be to keep an eye on official channels for this, and you should get about two days warning if there is a greater Northern Lights show um, coming our way. I am hoping for it. Ryan French, thank you.